this is one of those problems which become very very simple to solve once you actually draw diagrams and try to look at it visually. I am talking about the problem merge intervals on lead code and no doubt this is asked in a lot of coding interviews by almost every other company. So let's see what we can do about it. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. First, I will explain you the problem statement and we will look at some sample test cases. Next, we are going to look at a brute force approach very briefly and then I will show you visually how this problem looks and how can you come at a very efficient solution. That way you will never forget it. And then as usual, we will also do a dry run of the code so that you can understand how all of this actually works in action. Without further ado, let's get started. First of all, let's make sure that we are understanding the problem statement correctly. In this problem, you are given an array that has some intervals and you have to merge all the overlapping intervals. And once you're done with merging, once again, you have to return me an array that has all the non-overlapping intervals. So what does this actually mean? Let us try to understand it with our first test case. And you can see that I have an array and it has all of these intervals. So what do these intervals actually mean? For example, the interval 1, 3 simply means that you have elements 1, 2, 3 inside them. And then the interval 2, 6 simply means that you have all of these elements. Now, if you notice, the elements 2, 3, they exist in both of these intervals, correct? So technically, you can merge them. And once you merge them, what will happen? They become just one interval, right? And you can write it as 1, 6, correct? And similarly, if you try to look at these other intervals, you will see that none of these elements are common in the interval that you have defined. So now you cannot merge them. So this is the best possible scenario in which you can have non-overlapping intervals. So for the first test case, your answer will look something like this. You can see that I have merged four intervals into just three intervals, right? Similarly, you can look at one more test case. In a second test case, I have two intervals, 1, 4 and 4, 5. You know that the element 4 will be common in both of them. So I will just merge them and create one interval that will be 1, 5 and that will be your answer. Correct? Now, there is one important thing that you have to notice while solving this problem. For example, in the first test case, you cannot just say that, hey, I will make my interval 1, 18. That is the smallest value and the largest value. Because now this interval has all the elements from 1 up till 18. But when you look at all of these elements individually, you do not have a 7, you do not have 11, 12, 13 and so on, right? You get the idea. So you cannot have an interval with just the minimum value and the maximum value. You want to have the least number of intervals possible such that you are covering all of the elements, correct? So now, if you feel that you have understood the problem statement even better, first feel free to try the problem once again on your own. Otherwise, let us dive into the solution. To understand things better, let us start off with a bigger example. And as a programmer, your first approach should be that, okay, how can I solve this problem in a brute force manner? So here is something you can do. What you can do is you can start off with the first interval, right? 1, 3. And then what you will do is you will iterate over each of these intervals and try to find that, okay, which other intervals that I can include. And you will find that, okay, I can include 2, 6 and 2, 4 inside it. And what is the lower value and the upper value? That is 1 and 6. So ultimately, one of your intervals will end up looking like 1, 6. And then for your next iteration, what can you do? You can start off with the second interval that you have and then once again compare it with all the other intervals that you have and then try to merge it, right? You will keep on doing this for all the other intervals and then ultimately you will be able to arrive at a solution, right? But this solution will not be efficient at all. You will spend a lot of time just to iterate over the array again and again and this will have an order of n square time complexity and a lot of comparisons. So certainly we need a better approach to solve this problem. What can we do about it? So once again, I have the same array with me and we will try to come up with an efficient solution. If you remember, I told in the beginning of the video that sometimes problems become very easy when you try to visualize them. And in this problem, you know that all of these are intervals, right? There are integers between these ranges. So what happens if we try to plot them out and look at these intervals visually? I'll tell you how you can do that. So just create this type of a number line 
and then try to map all of the intervals that you have. So let us just start and try to get all of these intervals one by one. So my first interval is between one and three. My next interval is between two and six. My third interval is between eight and 10. The next interval is between eight and nine. Moving ahead, I have an interval between nine and 11. Then I arrive at 15 and 18. Then we have two comma four. And the last interval is 16 comma 17. So this is how your intervals look like visually. And if you notice this diagram closely, you have already arrived at the answer, right? Just look at it again. So these are your three intervals that should be in your output array, correct? And you also know what are their lower bound and upper bound. So one interval will be one comma six. The other interval will be eight comma 11. The third interval will be 15 comma 18, right? And that's it. This is your answer. But how do you get to it? Let me remove all of this and get back to our problem once again. Now, try to think how are you merging the intervals? So let us say I have my first interval that starts at one. Now, all throughout the array, you will want to find intervals that are closest to this one, right? And then you will try to merge them. So you're more concerned about the starting point of the intervals rather than the ending point. Because if they're starting together, then you want to club all of them in just one interval, correct? So that is the thought process on which what you can try to do is you can sort this entire array just based upon the first number of each interval. So based upon this, when you sort your array, your array will start to look something like this. You can see that all of these numbers, the starting point of each interval, they are now sorted in an ascending order. So technically, all the intervals that start together have now been grouped together as well, correct? So once again, let us try to plot these intervals, but this time we will go off of our sorted array. So I look at my first interval, I see one comma three, correct? So I plot it. Now look at the next interval two comma four. Where does it start? It starts at two, right? And you have already covered two in this interval. So make this interval a part of this existing interval, correct? So now you have a new bound one and four, right? But wait, you need to keep going ahead, right? Look at the next interval again. This is two comma six. So two once again lies over here, right? So you take up this interval and go all the way up to two. So what did you do? You updated your starting point and now your ending point is updated, right? But let us now keep moving ahead and see what happens. Look at the next interval. This is eight comma nine, right? And what is the starting point? This is eight. And this starting point eight, this is more than the ending point of the last interval. And that simply tells you that, hey, this is where you want to break your interval and create a new interval. So that is exactly what we will do. I create a new interval 8 comma 9. And then moving ahead, I have a next interval 8 comma 10. So this will also be included in this. And then my next interval is 9 comma 11. So 9 is once again included in this. So you see what is happening at each iteration. I will try to update that. Okay, these are my new bounds, right? So look at the next interval now. It is 15 comma 18. It starts at 15. But what was the ending point of the last interval? That was 11. Since 15 is greater than 11, I will once again start a new interval. So my new interval will be 15 to 18. And now I'm remaining with the last interval that is 16 comma 17. And that lies over here again. And that's it. You got all your non overlapping intervals, right? So one interval will be one comma six. The next will be eight comma 11. And the third will be 15 comma 18. And indeed, this array will be your answer. So you see what we are doing over here. First of all, you sort the array based upon the starting point of each interval. And once you have sorted the array, I trade through these intervals one by one. If your next interval starting point is less than the previous intervals ending point, then this interval will be a part of the overlapping interval and then you have to update your bounds. So my new bound becomes one comma four and then you will keep moving ahead. Then you see two comma six, two comma six will also be a part of your previous interval. So once again, your bound will update one comma six. So that is how you have to proceed. And ultimately you will be able to solve this problem in a very efficient manner. Now let us quickly do a dry run of the code and see how it works in action. 
on the left side of your screen, you have the actual code to implement this solution. And on the right, you have an array that is passed in as an input parameter to the function merge. Oh, and by the way, this complete code and its test cases are also available on my GitHub profile. You can find the link in the description below. Moving ahead with a dry run. What is the first thing that we do? First of all, we have some sanity checks such that if you only have one interval, then that's it. You just return it because you cannot merge just one interval. Correct. Now moving ahead, what do we do? First thing is we sort the array based upon the starting point of each interval. So once I sort it, my array starts to look something like this. Correct. You can use any method to sort, but I'm just using the library function and this will also work in an order of n log n time complexity. Once your array is sorted, now is the time that you will create a result list that will have all of your non-overlapping intervals. So how do you start going about it? So what I do is I create this array and I will just add the first interval inside it. So I say that, okay, my first interval will be 1,3, right? Now you start a for loop to iterate over each of these intervals. And this is the crux of the problem. So what I will do is I will look at the next interval that I have in the loop. The next interval I have is 2,6. So if the starting point of next interval is lower than the ending point of previous interval, you need to update your intervals. So since 2 is less than 3, what will happen is I will update this interval and my new interval will end up looking like 1,6. Correct? Similarly, you will keep on moving ahead and then look at the next interval that is 8,10. So once again check if the starting point of new interval smaller than the ending point of previous interval. No, 8 is greater than 6. So this will qualify as a new interval and you are going to populate your list. So this is how you will keep moving ahead and at the very end, this complete list will be your resultant output. So the time complexity of this solution will be order of n log n because you need this time to sort the array and the space complexity of this solution will be order of n because in the worst case, you can have all of the intervals that are already disjoint and that will be your resultant answer. I hope I was able to simplify the problem and its solution for you. As per my final thoughts, I just want to say that I know that you do most of your coding in front of a screen, correct? But sometimes it is better to follow the conventional approach and take out a piece of pen and paper. Try to draw the problem and then you might be surprised that you are able to arrive at an efficient solution. You see what happened over here, right? It became so very easy once you plotted everything out, right? So while going throughout this video, did you face any problems? Or have you seen any other such problems which became very easy once you draw them out? So tell me all of this in the comment section below and I would love to discuss all of them with you. As a reminder, if you found this video helpful, please do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This motivates me to make more and more such videos where I can simplify programming for you. Also let me know what problems you want me to solve next. Until then, see ya.